Leviticus chapter 16. This day deals with the Day of Atonement. This coming Wednesday is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, when the Jews celebrate that. But we have something even greater to celebrate in the Atonement. And we want to look at that, comparing their day and our day through Christ. So beginning to read in the 16th chapter at verse 7, it says, Then Aaron is to take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He is to cast lots for the two goats, one for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Aaron shall bring the goat whose lot falls to the Lord and sacrifice it for a sin offering. But the goat chosen by lot as a scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to be used for making atonement by sending it into the desert as a scapegoat. And then there's some explanation on this, and we'll skip down to verse 18. Verse 18. Then he shall come out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it. He shall take some of the bull's blood and some of the goat's blood and put it on the horns of the altar. He shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times to cleanse it and to consecrate it from the uncleanness of the Israelites. When Aaron has finished making atonement for the most holy place, the tent of meeting, and the altar, he shall bring forward the live goat. He is to lay both hands on the head of the goat, live goat and confess over it all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into a desert place or in the care of a man appointed for the task. The goat will carry on itself all their sins to a solitary place, and the man shall release it into the desert. Reading to the end of the 22nd verse of that chapter. Leviticus chapter 16 and verse uh, 21. I could probably quote it, but I better read it. <laughs> And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. The day of atonement. The sin, sins forgiven. But for the Jews, that had to be repeated each year. Aren't you glad that we aren't in that old dispensation when uh, we once a year get our sins forgiven and then through the year they all build up again and we have to start all over. <laughs> but uh, we have a living Lord. And that's the story of the scapegoat, really. A living Lord that we can call upon at any time. That's not an excuse to be careless and uh, sin needlessly, but if we do, realize that we have sinned, and in the case of Christians, our sins tend to be sins of omission rather than commission. Most of us as Christians, we're not likely to go out and uh, commit some uh, sin, breaking the Ten Commandments and whatnot, deliberately. But sometimes... We omit those things that we ought to have done. The old uh, prayer in the hymn book, you know, says that uh, we have done those things that we should not have done and have failed to do those things that we should have done. Day of Atonement, repeated each year. Let's consider the significance, though, of these two goats. I want to talk about two goats this morning. Isn't that something for church? <laughs> One died for sins. That's what we see in the ninth verse, isn't it? Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. Sacrifice to God for the people. 
that poor innocent goat had to lose his life for the sins of the people. An innocent animal for the sins. But doesn't that parallel our story? Jesus, the innocent one, the only perfect one that ever lived, offered his life, his blood, as this goat's blood was shed and put on the altar for the sins of the people. So Jesus shed his blood on that cross of Calvary for us, the innocent for the guilty. He died that we might be forgiven. Isn't that a tremendous thought? He died that we might be forgiven. We had no other way. There was no other hope for us. We could not earn our own salvation. No one else could buy it for us. No saint of the past could build up enough merit that would atone for, for our sins. But Jesus took them upon himself. Those sins that we could never have atoned for, Jesus atoned for. He fulfilled that day of atonement in dying for us. He paid the price with his own blood. What a price to pay. You know, we might sacrifice different things, different ways, but for what, how much would we give our lives for our children, for our spouse? Yes. How willing would we be for others? And how often do we think, well, does this person deserve it? You know? Does this person deserve me to do something for them? How much do we give? of ourselves. I'm not just talking about our money or a bit of time, but of our, our whole selves, our, our energy. I guess there's nobody on that side, is there? <laughs> uh, I better stick to this side. Uh, how much do we give? And yet Jesus gave his all. He held nothing back. He, we shed our blood. That, that is a completion of this. I remember when my uh, grandson, the middle one, that had the problem with his leg and they were going to operate on it. He was very young at the time. And one of the concerns that the doctor had was that uh, it, it could cause bleeding that they might not be able to stop. And he warned the parents if this happened, he would, as they said, bleed out. And that would be it for him. His lost his blood. Well, it all went well, and uh, he survived, of course, thankfully. Uh, but uh, it just shows that, uh, that uh, how important that blood is to us. You know, we could uh, hate the thought of it, but, you know, we could lose an arm, or we could lose a leg, or we could lose some part of our body and, and still survive well with it. But if we lost our blood, that would be it. That would be the ultimate thing, to lose our blood. Probably all heard the story of the uh, two young children and the uh, one, we'll say, little girl was, had to face an operation and needed some blood. And it was a rare type. And they checked around. And it was hard to find it. But his, the brother had the same blood. And so they said to this little fellow, would you be willing to give some of your blood to, to your sister? So he agreed to for it. And uh, they hooked them up and transferred some of his blood over to his sister. And just before they were finished doing it, he looked at the doctor and said, when do I die? He said, oh, you're not going to die. He said, well, I thought when I gave my blood to my sister, I'd die. He didn't realize it was just taking a little bit. But... That was the love he had for his sister. And Jesus had that love for us. And he gave his own blood. 
It wasn't taken from him. In the case of that goat on the day of atonement, uh, it was taken from him, from that goat. But Jesus willingly offered his. Oh, yes, it was people who drove those nails into his hands. It was a man who stuck that spear into his side and caused the blood to come out through his hands and his side and his feet. But he could have stopped it. He was almighty God. But he willingly did it for you and for me. And for whosoever will, come on to him. He paid the price. He gave himself. He died. And this goat foreshadows or looks forward to or pictures that, that atonement that Jesus made on the cross. Once and for all. He didn't have to keep doing it. He didn't have to stay on that cross. That's why we have an empty cross. We don't have a body hanging on that cross. Partly because he rolled, but uh, uh, he did it once, never to be repeated. Once and for all, for the sins of all. But there were two goats. The one died. Jesus represented that one on the cross. But one lived to carry away sins. That's what we read in our text, that 21st verse. Aaron was to lay his hands on the head of the goat. You can see the picture. You can see him bringing, he's already slain the, the dead goat, or the one goat, it's dead, they put, put the blood on the altar. Now he brings out the live goat. He puts his hands upon the head of that goat and confesses all the sins of the people of Israel onto that goat, transferring, as it were, their sins onto that life animal. And then having done that, he gives that goat to one to take away. And the man leads that goat off into the wilderness, way out, far from the people. And when he gets to the end, to, off in the, the depths of the wilderness, he shoes that goat. Go now, shoot. Never come back. Take those sins away. We don't want to ever have them again. And the goat would ramble off, taking his life with him, but taking the sins of the people. What a picture of Jesus. Access to God was symbolically uh, applied there through these goats. And so now, access to God is established through our living Lord, God the Son, who lives forever, who rose victorious from the grave. Yes, he hung on that cross to die for the sins we've committed. But he rose victorious to live forever, that we can cast our sins upon him and know that the living Lord takes them away, just as that goat symbolically took the sins of the people away into the wilderness to be lost, never to return, never to be remembered again. So, as we cast our sins upon the living Lord Jesus Christ, he takes our sins away. We sing that chorus sometimes, he took my sins away, he took my sins away. And now I'm singing every day, he took my sins away. If you will come to Jesus Christ today, he'll take your sins away. He'll take your sins away and give you victory as you uh, go along the line. Oh, he takes our sins away. Aren't you glad of that? Day by day, we can lay any sin that comes upon us upon Jesus Christ. Symbolically, sins were cast on that goat, carried away to be lost forever. In reality, our sins are cast upon Jesus, the risen Lord, alive forever. He takes them all away. They will be removed, wiped out, never remembered against us anymore. 
Oh, we need to remember that. When Satan tries to come along and reminds us of our past and accuses us, or it might not be too distant past, something maybe where we have failed God and uh, in some way, and we've confessed that to Jesus and laid it on Jesus and it's gone, but Satan will try to remind us of that and bring it back. The saying goes, when he tries to remind us of our past, remind him of his future. You know, it's not too good. But uh, he'll try to do that. But Jesus took them all away. He carries them. Once our sins are laid on Jesus, leave them there. Don't bring them up again. Don't let Satan remind us. If he does, just tell him to get on his way. <laughs> you know? Kick that old guy out of there. <laughs> Get rid of Satan. <laughs> Pay no attention to him. Jesus is all powerful. Satan is all limited. He can only do so much. And in his day, he knows his end is close and he's fighting for all he's worse. You know, it's like a trapped animal. If uh, an animal gets trapped and thinks it's going to be killed, it'll fight for all it's worth, won't it? And Satan is fighting for all it's worth, but Jesus is the victor, and Satan does, cannot defeat. And when we lay our sins on Jesus, they are there forever. He takes them away. We don't have to worry about them. Cast them upon him. He will remove them. And the Bible says in one place there that in the sea of his forgetfulness, never to be remembered against us anymore. Isn't that wonderful? People might remember them. You know, people will sometimes say, I'll never forgive this person or that person. That's the way of the world. That's the way of false religions. That's the difference with Christianity. Judaism says remember. Hinduism and Muslims, uh, Islam seems to be emphasized that remember, you know. If somebody's hurt you, remember, get your own back sort of approach. But Christianity says forgive. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And that is a call to us as Christians to forgive others, not to bring them up. But there are those of society that will try to bring them up, try to remember us. They need to have a good experience of Jesus that will help them to follow his example in forgetting the past and giving new life. And so atonement was provided. In the Old Testament, in this passage we read from Leviticus, it was provided through the two goats. Symbolically, at least. It took two goats, one slaughtered, one alive. But it's still temporary. Had to be repeated again next year. Two more goats had to be called into action to do that. Repeated yearly. But Jesus fulfilled the work of both. One in, one in himself he filled the, fulfilled the work of both goats. The one who died for sin, the one who carried away sin. The di dying Savior on the cross, the risen Savior living today. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow, the Gacers wrote. And uh, what a tremendous song that's. Uh, I think that's one of the newer ones that's going to survive the generations. <laughs> because he lives. Because he lives. We can cast our sins upon him, not upon a goat to lead off into the wilderness and, and shoo away, thinking it's going to take the sins that were confessed to it, but a living Lord who takes our sins away and gives us victory, gives us new life to live. He died on Calvary to provide salvation. He lives today to take our sins away. Once and for all. Not just for a year. Don't have to round up all those sins again next year and confess them all over. 
I know some people, until they get real victory in Jesus, they'll be confessing the sins over and over again. Once we've confessed them to Jesus, laid them upon him, leave them there. Uh, the old song says, take your burden to the cross and lead it, leave it there. And we sometimes say that regarding our altar. Take your burdens to the altar. Confess them to Jesus there and leave them on the altar. Don't take them back uh, with you. But so many people do that. But Jesus wants us to lay our sins on him. He'll take them all away once and for all. No need of repetition. They don't need a day of atonement every year. We can lay them on Jesus. So on Calvary, Jesus died for all, that all might be saved. He rose and lives. And only those who confess their sins to him and trust him to take them away will be saved. Have you cast your sins upon the living Lord in confession? Trust we all have. He paid the price. He wants to take away sins for each one to be saved and have a home with him.